and welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to be making some pickled corn relish. It's a recipe that y'all been, a lot of y'all been asking me to do and to can for you. It's a really, once you get all your ingredients cut up and, and ready to go, it's really easy to make this uh, pickled corn relish. And um, a lot of us got some, quite a bit of corn this summer. Some of us not so good, but we ended up with a little bit of corn in the freezer anyways. Now you can make this out of fresh corn. You can make it out of corn, you know, frozen corn that you've already got in the freezer, or even maybe that you bought in the store. You don't really want to use canned corn. You want to use fresh or frozen. And um, most of the ingredients you, you're probably going to be, it's going to be in your garden already. Uh, so we'll go over the ingredients here in a minute and uh, there may be a few spices maybe you don't have and maybe you do if you already do a lot of pickling and making relish so this is gonna go pretty quick it's easy it's delicious and I know people will ask well, what do you eat corn relish with well you can eat it on a hot dog you can eat it on top of your burger you can eat it as a side with maybe barbecue or something like that. You can mix corn relish with some of your salads. Um, let's see, me and Mr. Brown eat, sometimes we make a protein bowl that has rice, a side of a, a bean like black beans or white beans and maybe chicken or something like that. And this relish would be delicious in that. You can put it on, uh, what they call street tacos. You can use that as a relish for your street tacos or any tacos, anything. It's just delicious and it's really good to eat when you're eating like say fish or something like that or maybe a piece of pork or chicken. It, it's just a really good side and really something to have to, to throw in a salad or anything like that. So if you like relish, chow chow, anything like that, you're gonna like this corn relish. So I'm going to bring you down and we're going to look at the ingredients. And remember that my recipes and ingredients will always be down in the description box below the videos. If you're watching me on the computer, sometimes it'll say more and you just click on the more or there'll just be a little arrow or something below your video. Just click on that. Just for, It depends on it, what device you're watching it on. Now, if you're watching me on TV, you won't be able to, to do that. But a lot of y'all... Uh, new subscribers welcome welcome to our channel we are so happy that you're with us and you decided to sub and be with us and spend our journey with us and uh, if you go back to some of the really first videos you'll understand uh, more of mine and mr. Brown's life as growing up and raising children being on a farm and being sustainable we've done it all of our life so we just want y'all to know we appreciate y'all for coming on board and supporting us so let's get started with our uh, pickled corn relish and um, i've already got all my ingredients cut up and everything measured out so this is going to go pretty fast We've got all of our ingredients ready to go here. And I'm gonna read off the amount. Now, 
this differ, differs from time to time for some reason, but I'm not for sure how many pints I'm going to get yet, but we'll know after I get it done. I've got, I think I've got six pints back here in my canner, and then I have several half pints because I want some in pints and then I want some in half pints. I really don't think you're going to want this relish in quarts. I mean, that's up to you, but I just really don't think you would. I uh, don't think you'll eat that much at a time, and that way this will stay fresher this way. So I'm going to do some in pints, some in half pints. The, the time that I can it's going to be the same. I'm going to can it for 20 minutes. So, but let's go over our ingredients. I have got 10 cups of uh, fresh corn that I've cut off the cob. And uh, in fact, there's probably about four cups here that I had done put in the freezer that I'd cut off the cob and, and put up. So that's why I say you can use corn that you've already put in the freezer or just fresh off your, your cob, whichever one. I've got 10 cups of that. I've got a couple of cups of uh, diced up celery here. Let's see, I've got, this is about a cup and a half of a large, this is a large onion. Now, if you want more onion, you put more onion. You can put two cups if you want to. I've got four cups of bell pepper. Now, this bell pepper is what's really going to make your relish. That's why I'm putting more bell pepper than I am onion. But like I said, you put as much onion as you want. And you want, you don't have to put red bell pepper in here, but it just makes the jar prettier. So I've got a mixture because in my garden, I, I picked mainly green bell peppers and put them up. And um, then I had a few red, but not very many. So what I done to compensate for them red bell peppers to make it look so pretty, I had a small jar of uh, pimentos in my pantry. I always keep a couple jars for making um, different, just different things like, um, uh, what am I thinking of? Pimento cheese and stuff like that. So this is four cups of diced up bell peppers. I've got two cups of sugar. And then in my little cup here, I've got, let's see, I think it's how much? Da, 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 da. Two and a half tablespoons of canning salt. And that's in the bottom. Then I've got two and a half teaspoons of celery seed. I've got two and a half tablespoons of dry mustard powder. And I've got one and more, one and one fourth teaspoon of turmeric. Let me make sure I said all that right. Got it all. Canning salt, celery seed, dry mustard, turmeric. Yes, so that's your spices. Now, if you don't keep celery seed, and I do run out of it a lot because I do a lot of pickling and stuff like that. Um, if you kind of like to go the way of the, the dill taste in your relish, you can use dill seed. Either way. The, my recipe calls for celery seed, but you can sub it with dill if you like that, that dill taste, then I do. So that's up to you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recap the recipe. And like I said, it'll be down in the description box where you can look at it uh, and copy it down. And also back here in the back, I've got a pot that has five cups of white vinegar right back here. And we're fixing to bring that up to a boil. I've got my canner. This is my water bath canner. I've got my jars in there. They're getting hot. And I, make I try to make sure I've got enough water in there to make sure as I load it up that I have at least one and a half to two inches of water over my jar lids once I get them in there. And I've also got a couple of tablespoons of white vinegar in here to keep my jars from getting uh, that white corrosive lime on the as a can in there because I have very limey water. I am on well water. So we got 10 cups of fresh corn, which about 16 to 20 ears is what that'll add up to. It just depends on how big they are. I've got four cups of diced bell pepper. I've got two cups of celery. One cup of diced onion, but I've got about one and a half cups there. 
two cups of sugar, five cups of white vinegar, two and a half tablespoons of canning salt, two and a half teaspoons of celery seed or dill seed, whichever you would prefer, two and a half tablespoons of dry mustard powder, and one and one fourth teaspoons of turmeric. So that is all of our ingredients. So now that we got all that out of the way, I've also, I'm fixing to put my jar lids. These are four jars lids. I love these lids. I do have them down. I have a, a code down, a link down below in my description box for the four jar lids. And they are always having some kind of promotion or something going on with them. And these are really, these are wonderful lids. I have come to prefer these lids over any other at this point. So please, if you haven't tried the four jars, lids, rings, please try them. They're, they've done well for me. Anything this point that I've been using them on, they have gotten a great seal and they're still sealed and everything's good. Now, I wanna tell you that an instance I got into, I know y'all want me to get with this recipe, but it's very important about our jar lids because you always want a good seal. I, there was a girl, a young girl that came to my home <laughs> not too long, just probably a week or so ago. And she wanted me to show her how she had, I think the first time maybe growing a bunch of cucumbers and she wanted me to teach her how to make um, pickles. I said, well, that's a good start. So that's what we done. And she had brought me, she had bought a brand new case of a uh, quart, uh, just from Walmart, the ball jars and lids. We had some issues with the lids. Um, I still, I sent her home with only just a few that even sealed before she left here. And I told her to keep an eye on them. And I don't, to this point, I still haven't talked to her but the, the lids did not seal good. Um, so be careful and watch your lids. Uh, make sure they got a good tight seal on them and you hear that ping, ping, ping. And uh, then you always know you're, you're usually always safe with that. So let's get on with making our pickled corn relish. Okay, we're gonna start putting our ingredients in our pot. Please don't judge my pickling pot there. It is stained up. I don't worry about it. Oops. I'm not, y'all, I have got to get used to this new stove. <laughs> Turn it on the wrong. There's six burners here. Okay. What I want to do is get this. This is five cups of vinegar, white vinegar. And um, what I've got here, of course, is my canner. And my jars are in here waiting. They're still hot. I'm going to let this come up to boil. And then I'm going to start adding my other ingredients to it. Now, you want to make sure that you wash your jars good, of course. We all we go over this. And uh, this right here, put it in the canner, boil them. You're going to sterilize them. A lot of people say they don't even wash their jars. They wash them before they put them up, you know, for storage. And they may rinse them, but they don't wash them. They, they stick them in the canner and let them boil. That sterilizes them. Um, I've just always been in the habit of washing my jars and my rings and, and everything before I go to canning. So, anyways... Everybody's to their own as long as you're safe with it because uh, you have to watch for botulism. It'll make you very, very sick. But I've never in my years of canning and eating anything that was canned by family or friends never had that issue. Thank goodness. So over here in my old pot here, I've got five cups of vinegar. We're going to bring it up to a boil. Okay, why we're bringing the vinegar up to boil, I just want to talk to y'all for just a minute. Um, you know, getting prepared, we've always been prepared for being 
happened to go off grid if for any reason that we had to. In our area, we could be without electricity for up, I have seen people out of electricity for up to a month and that was due to um, ice storms, floods, just bad weather. Um, we've never just had any blackouts or anything like that because of different issues. But it can and has always happened in our area up here in the hills of Arkansas. And so as people that have lived here generation after generation, we know what it takes to survive in issues. Being off grid has never been an issue if you're prepared for any, with any, uh, for any reason, put it that way. And we can survive with every tool, anything that we have inside the house or outside the house to keep our life going. We pretty much have it. But another thing that I just want to explain, I'm getting to that, is we put a skylight in here in the kitchen. And because we live in such a small little house or cabin, whatever you want to call it, this one skylight puts out a lot of light during the day. So being with that electricity, this skylight would be a savior because it puts out so much light. I've had people say, Lori, your lighting has changed. You know, it's, it looks different. And, you know, I can apologize for that or whatever. But this is something that was a necessity. So we done it. And it puts, it puts in a natural light. So that's what you are seeing, is this natural light coming in. And uh, I love this natural light. Not only does it, I don't use hardly any electricity during the day because of it. And if I'm without electricity, we're good. We wouldn't even have to light any lanterns till after dark. So we're good on that. Um, our house is small enough to just put in the one small, it's a two, it's a two by two skylight, um, puts out quite a bit. A bigger house would probably do a couple more, but, uh, so I just want to explain that because I've had people say, Lori, what is wrong with your lighting? There's nothing wrong with my lighting. Nothing. It's natural light coming in through the skylight and I won't change that. So if you're seeing something that just looks a little bit different, that's what it is. So, our vinegar is fixing to start boiling, so we can get on with this. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cannon salt and all of my seasoning. I've just got it all here in my, my little cup here. And since my vinegar is already at a good simmer and hot, I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Now, I'm going to let this simmer just like this for about five minutes. Okay, my seasonings have been simmering for about four or five minutes. Now I've got my two cups of sugar. That's going in. I'm gonna stir that. Let this come back up to a simmer and let it simmer for about five minutes to get that sugar. What it is, the first five minutes you want to make sure that your cannon salt is good and dissolved and you know all your seasonings and stuff. And uh, now you want to make sure that you got your your sugar good and dissolved and all of it incorporated good. So it's been simmering another five minutes. So all together it's been simmering about 10 minutes. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our vegetables. We're gonna add our celery.
If you're all wondering why I'm cooking back here on the back, it's because there wasn't enough room up here. And uh, this burner right here at the corner, uh, we got a little bit of issues with it. Mr. Brown's fixing to try to fix it, or I would probably be doing it right here. He's got to find another gas line to, to hook up to this front one. The back one works, the front one doesn't. And it's another one of my bigger burners, so we got to get that fixed. But that's just issues you fall into when you buy something that's older, used. But it still, so far, has been a good stove. I love it. Okay, we got our celery in there. We're going to put our four cups of beautiful that makes your jars look so pretty of our bell peppers. It's already looking and just smelling so good. And we got our onions. There's our onions. Celery, our onions, and our bell peppers. Okay. I'm going to stir this, and we're going to let this simmer for about five minutes. Now, we're not putting our corn in just yet. We want our corn to stay good and and firm. You want that crispness, that crisp, not crispness, but crispness in that corn, or we do. So, and since you're not pressure, having to pressure can this, um, it's pretty much going to stay at a good, firm, crispy stage anyways. So I'm going to bring that to simmer, and when it does, I'm going to let it simmer for five more minutes. Okay, y'all can see how it's come to a good, hard simmer. I'm going to do this for about five minutes. Okay, so now that those veggies have boiled, we're going to add our corn. This is 10 cups. You won't be able to see me put it in there, but I'm fixing to dump it. And my pot was just big enough for all this. It's real pretty corn. I haven't made this. I haven't made this in a couple years, so I'm kind of excited to have some in my pantry. A lot of times I'll just do, maybe just if we're having something that I want some corn relish with, I'll just, you know, during the summer I'll just make some fresh and not, you know, and serve it. Yes, Sissy. I want some milk. Okay, I'll get you some milk. Okay, we got our corn in there. It's 10 cups. My pot is full. I'm going to let this come up to a simmer and let this simmer one more time for five minutes. And then we'll get ready to put it in our jars. Okay, you can see how here at the side how it's coming to a simmer. Don't bring this to a big hard bowl. You just want it to simmer for five minutes because you really, you're not wanting to cook that corn to death. So simmer see how it's simmering there at the side just let it do that for about five minutes now i'm wanting to keep my jars hot so i'm just going to take out a couple at a time i tend to do that anymore when i'm unless i'm canning dry beans or something like that when it's something hot like this i need my jars and all my ingredients hot i don't like to take all my jars out and take the chance of my jars cooling off because we do have the air on in the house today so we're just going to take our heart jars, and my corn is looking good. It smells wonderful. I'm so glad that I decided to do this for y'all. So we're just going to add, and we're going to leave about a half an inch head space. Make sure it's covered with your liquid. It 
So that's about an inch. I can do a little bit more and make it half an inch head space. I know a lot of y'all been asking me about if I had a corn pickled corn relish uh, recipe because I hadn't done a video on it yet. So it was time. And I, like I said, I'm glad I've done it because I do, I do want some of this in my pantry. It's been a while. Just a little bit more on top. And we're going to debubble it. this I do this a lot there's really not a lot of air bubbles in here at this point but you want to get them whatever's there you want to try to get it out I'm going to take a little bit of vinegar on a dish towel and we're going to go around the top clean that off Around the very top and you can see that I did have something on on there that needed to come off and around the sides so we're going to get our lids and I just put my lids in hot tap water I don't boil the water on top of stuff and put them in there it's just hot tap water so now we're going to put our rings on and that jar's hot. Finger tight. So there it is. And we're going to put, I'm going to put these back in the canner. And then I'm going to get two more hot jars out. Like I said, I'm going to do some in pints and some in half pints, and we'll see what we get. Now, you can very easily triple and double this recipe, double and triple, whichever way. This is a wonderful way to use it. Maybe you've got corn that was real wormy and you can only use so much of the ears just to get that corn off there because every little bit that you can get is just more in your pantry. And I guarantee you, if like I said before, if you're anybody that likes chow chow or relish and you eat it on so many things like we do, you're gonna like this. And it will be pantry stable for several years. And that's what, at this point, and always growing up, most of our food was put up pantry stable. Because you never knew from day to day. you know, what life would bring or how hard times would get. There's uh, an older gentleman, his name was Mr. Bell. Um, Jim Bell, pretty sure. Anyways, he was like a mentor to Mr. Brown. Hard working man, farmer, um, big trapper. And that's why Danny got to know him 
and he taught Mr. Brown a lot that he knows about trapping. Now back then, trapping is what fed your family because for one thing, you had to keep control of the beaver population or the coon population because what happens if, if you don't, diseases take over. So you have to do these things. But actually, a coon hide or something like that would bring more than what their pay would be for that day at a regular at work because Jim would work all day. I think Danny said for 50 cents a day, but then at night he would go trap and make more money that night trapping and bringing in hides than he did at you know his full-time job during the day. But anyways, I need to debubble this. I love hearing the old stories because I tell you, your elderly people that have been through this, that have been through the depression, who have seen so many hard times, that's how we grew up because our families on both sides went through it. You know, being prepared is just something that we've always lived by. So we got two more jars done and we're going to continue to do this and um, see how many we get. I think I can get, I think I can get um, two more pints and maybe, I don't know, I may do one more pint and I may do the rest in half pints. My old fingers, they just, you know, when I say finger tight, my fingers don't get them very tight. Okay, there's another pint. And I'm going to bring out two half pints. And get them filled up. I've got an older video making a, a chow chow. I've got all kinds of canon videos and I'll leave that playlist below down in my description box because I know a lot of you have trouble finding some of those Canon videos. If for some reason you feel like you don't have enough liquid to finish off your jars, just add a little bit of vinegar to it. I'm gonna kind of tilt my pan That one's a little full, but it'll be okay. Let's put some in this one. I'm gonna tilt my pan again and get me a little bit of brine. Okay. Debubble. Yeah, that one's a little full. Wipe our rims. And looking in my pot, I think I can get a couple more half pints. Okay, I ended up with five pints. One, two, three, four, five half pints. And then I'm going to leave this jar in there just to, to keep that, to hold that space in there so nothing will fall over. So I'm going to bring this to a really rolling boil. And then once it does, we're going to let it boil for 20 minutes. Well, we got our jars out. They've all sealed. And look how pretty that is. Pickled corn relish. 
I hope y'all try this recipe. I know a lot of y'all have been asking about this recipe, and I'm so glad I finally got to it, to do it and get it done for you. Um, you know, at the beginning of the video, I told you all the different recipes that you could use this with, and it's just good stuff just to eat by itself. It don't matter. So, I hope y'all enjoy this video. I'm going to be, um, some of y'all have asked about me doing, canning some ham up. I do have a ham in the freezer that's been there, and I do need to can it up. Having canned ham in the pantry is it's a, essential for me because we, we eat and use a lot of ham in a lot of different recipes. And um, just like the video I done the other day about bringing a jar out and making the Woolworth uh, ham salad. I mean, it's just anything like that. So anyways, guys, you take care. Fill your pantries up. Just be prepared. I mean, that's always been the story of our life, always being prepared, and always make it yours. Uh, make sure your, your house is in order, and be prepared for anything. It don't matter if it's weather, disaster, or any other thing that could happen. Always be prepared. We love y'all. Stay safe. And we'll see y'all in a couple of days.